Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, and Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath is now out. And with that said, I have compiled this video here of 15 essential tips for you to learn in Mortal Kombat 11 if you're either new to the game, Aftermath is your first, you know, dip your toe into the water, or if you've been playing but, you know, along the way you stopped and you're coming back in now. Because, hey, quite a few mechanics have changed up since you left, maybe. Uh, so with that said, probably going to be a longer video. Everything will be timestamped, so check the video description or the top pinned comment for that. And otherwise, hey, here's 15 essential tips for you to learn in Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. So for the first thing you should know is Mortal Kombat 11 does have a meter system. Uh, that is these little guys down here. The meter going upwards is a defensive meter. The meter going outwards is your offensive meter. And it really doesn't work like any other fighting game on the market ever. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 is very unique in how the meters work. And a lot of moves, you can make them a better version of a move by burning a bar, right? So we'll use Jackie's Grease Kick here. In and of itself, that's the move. However, if we were to enhance it and spend that bar, now it launched. And now as you see here, the bar is slowly refilling by itself. So I don't need to do anything at all. I can just sit here and it refills. Once again, unlike pretty much every other major fighting game on the market, the bars take care of themselves. So offensive bar here, we're turbocharging a move. We get combo potential and you know, for many moves, what the enhanced version is, is different. Right? It could be more damage, it could be better positioning, it can be one of a million things. However, it's just, you burn the bar, you get a better version of the move for the most part. And then once you burn that bar, hey, you gotta sit and wait. So right now, hey, one of our bars just came back, so we can spend it. So one thing to know here, right after you burn a bar, the regeneration period is halted for a brief amount of time. So right here, we spend a bar, we have full bar. And now, after a brief moment, it's regenerating, right? But if I spend another bar here, then it is regeneration is going to stop. So we burn the other bar, regeneration stops, and then after a small period of time, it starts up again. So I, just keep in mind, if you're looking to build another bar, every time you spend a bar, the regeneration process does halt a little bit. And that holds true for both defensive and offensive bars. Speaking of defensive bars, some moves are so strong, but they don't directly have an attack utility. They instead use your defensive bar. So we're in Jackie variation number three here, and she has basically like a super jump, right? And that's all well and good, but if you want to modify the angles, that will take a defensive bar, not an offensive bar. So if we want to do a very far version here, which goes basically the length of the screen here, like, you know, like we're playing Dragon Ball Fighters or Marvel vs. Capcom, then all of a sudden that will take one of your defensive bars instead of an offensive bar. Once we're done, we can only do the regular version. Also, she has a close version. Kind of can stay close to the enemy here. That also takes a defensive bar. So certain moves use your defensive bar for utility rather than your offensive bar. And that's the general gist of meter. There's some more stuff, especially with the defensive bar. We'll talk about a little bit later on in the video, but that is the general idea. So your bar gain is free. You don't have to worry about babing uh, meter management other than watching it fill up or watching yourself drain it. So you can kind of just do what you want to do with meter in Mortal Kombat 11. Now, one of the most important things to understand about modern era Mortal Kombat games is they work under a 3D rule set despite being a 2D game. So when I mean a 3D rule set, I mean like think Tekken, think Virtual Fighter, think Dead or Alive, that kind of stuff. Because how attacks work, generally it falls under that category. So in Mortal Kombat 11, there are four attack heights. Uh, barring a couple of character specific wonky stuff here. There are highs, there are mids, there are lows, and there are overheads. So each one has its own specific rule set of how it interacts. So for the most part, your high attacks are generally speaking your fastest attacks in the game. However, all high attacks can be ducked under freely. So no matter how many times I hit this button, I'm just not going to hit Fujin because this attack is a high. Now against a crouching enemy here, this is a neutral crouch too, and we'll go over that in a second. I can still hit them with a mid, I can still hit them with a low, and I can still hit them with an overhead, right? But as long as they're just holding crouch and neutral, I can't do a dang thing. And that's very important in this game for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, besides the fact going under attacks, right? That's how you punish a lot of moves. Uh, your base throw is also a high. So you can easily neutral duck under a throw and then just stand up and punish the enemy on the other end of things. Now, here's the thing. When you hold block, 
Now, all of a sudden, when you hold block, when you're crouching, it raises your profile effectively. So now, I can hit you with a high, and I can throw you. So, when you are neutral ducking, just keep it in mind, holding nothing at all will keep you safe from highs and throws. Well, not all throws. There's command throws, but you know what I mean. The, the general throw, right? But the second you hold block, you're committing, okay, I'm going to now block, and I can be hit by a throw, I can be hit by a high, but, you know, the risk of neutral ducking is, well, you can't block the overhead, you can't block the low, and you can't block the mid, right? So there's a bit of a risk-reward factor to it. Now, mids can hit you no matter what. doesn't really matter, right? I can boot you with this mid all I want. doesn't matter if you're standing, doesn't matter if you're crouching, or even neutral duck, whatever, right? But the thing is, mids tend to be slower than highs, just across the board, right? A couple characters, they have very strong mids, but that's definitely not universal across the cast. So mids, stand, crouch, don't matter. Now, the lows, as you can probably figure out here, lows, well, they hit low. So a low has to be blocked while crouching. So if you're stand blocking, that ain't going to do the trick here. You can stand block all you want. I see here, you're blocking my high just fine, you're blocking my mid just fine, but that low, not going to work out for you. So you have to block the low attacks while crouch blocking. And finally, overhead attacks. Overhead attacks come full circle here. You must block your overhead attacks while standing. So if you're scared of a low here and you're crouch blocking, you will then instead get bopped by an overhead. And if you're scared of an overhead and you stand blocked, then you might get bopped by the low. That's kind of the inherent mix up of the nature, right? Everyone in the game can put out low attacks here, like back end uh, four, as uh, the nomenclature goes here, or back end rear kick. That is a universal low for everybody. And you can also short hop, and short hop attacks are universally overheads. So that's kind of a basic primer on attack heights. Once again here, generally speaking, highs are the fastest attacks in the game. However, they are the attacks that carry the inherent weakness of they can just be ducked under, right? And as soon as you duck under a high, you can hit them with your own button, you can hit them with an uppercut, or you can just then stand and punish that high with whatever you want to do. They're the fastest attacks, but they have the most weaknesses attached to them. Mids... No real weakness, but they tend to be a little slower. Lows, stand blockers beware, and overheads, crouch blockers beware. Now, let's talk one of the most important aspects of Mortal Kombat 11. That is the flawless block mechanic. Uh, it separates, you know, a good player from a great one a lot of the times, because flawless blocks are very important. Now, what is a flawless block? Well, just to show it real quick here. Hey, that's a flawless block right there. So what is a flawless block versus a regular block? Well, first up here, you might see I'm taking 13.5 damage on a chip, right? However, if I were to flawless block it, well, I took 1.35. So I took significantly less damage. So you take less block damage uh, for chip, and that's just step one of a lot of steps to go forward. Much more importantly, let's look at some frame data here. So frame data also changes a lot of time on flawless block for many moves. So if I block this move here regularly, I am neutral with the enemy. I'm neutral with Scarlet, right? She's plus zero on block. However, if I were to flawless block it, she is now negative five. So it's not a full punish in this specific scenario here, but it is definitely my turn now over Scarlet's. And how do you do a flawless block? Well, hey, it's as simple as blocking, although it has a very specific timing. You need to block within three frames of the attack connecting on you. So if you block too early, you're never going to get it. If you block too late, well, hey, you got hit in the head, right? So you don't want to do that. So generally speaking, for the most part here, you have to block right before the attack connects. And it is within three frames of the attack. Now, there are so many applications of Flawless Block and so much stuff to tell you. It could be a whole video in and of itself, right? I'll just try to cover some of the basics. So, hey, specific timing, that's important, right? Uh, also, it can stop dead certain special attacks here. So, say Scarlet here, she's going to do down four and cancel into her special move here, right? So, in and of itself, this little combo is basically safe. It's only negative three. However, if I introduce the Flawless Block to this equation... Hey, what happened to that special move? If I do it again, that special move is definitely coming out, right? But here's the thing. Many moves, if flawless blocked, are no longer special cancelable. So if uh, you block normally, sure, you get the special cancel. But as soon as the uh, flawless block comes in, no dice. That special cancel doesn't happen. The special move you input it will not come out. This applies to many attacks throughout the game. And yeah, it's pretty much a big deal maker because a lot of pressure can be like doing uh, basic normal into a special cancel, and this robs the ability of that normal to cancel into the special move. 
Also, many strings have what we call a gap in them, right? So this string right here for Scarlet, leaves her very safe, right? It's negative one, and from a this distance, negative one doesn't matter. And considering she outranges a lot of the cast, like, it is very beneficial for her to have this exact spacing and frame data, right? However, between the second and third hit of the string, there is a gap. And with this gap, I can flawless block it. Now, in this string, the frame data doesn't change, right? So that works out for her benefit. However, you do get defensive measures from a flawless block. And we can use one of those against her. As you can see right there, so we turned that tables against her and we'll talk about the defensive options here in the next part but yeah flawless blocks are very valuable and you should practice them because it'll bring you to the next level of play there's so many obvious things that are punishable with a flawless block that aren't punishable otherwise there's so many gaps to exploit and just so many tricks you can do with this very strong defensive maneuver so hey let's go into it now let's go into defensive maneuvers so you have a lot of defensive options available to you when you are either knocked down or after you do a flawless block first up here let's talk the knockdown stuff so when you're knocked down so we got scarlet doing a sweep to us right what options do we have well we can roll backwards and we can also roll forwards how do we do that quite simple here all you have to do is as you're waking up not before you have to be actually waking up then hit input your back or forward button, whichever direction you want to roll in, and your stance switch button. Uh, stance switch doesn't get used too much in MK11, but this button is one of its uses. So yeah, after you get knocked down, as you're getting up, just hold one of those two directions, and you will wake up in that direction with a roll. Now this roll is invincible, meaning the enemy can be hitting all the buttons they want, and they cannot hit you out of it. However, the roll can be thrown, either by a regular grab or a command grab. So that is kind of the essence. So if they're just going attack, 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 well, the roll will get you out of dodge in that regard. But if they expect the roll, they can throw you out of it. Now, besides that, that's a movement defensive option, right? What if you want to just turn the tables on the enemy? Well, we have what we call up two and up three. So up three is a wake up attack here and it hits the enemy level to the ground. And while you are waking up with your up three, you are invincible. Meaning the enemy can't hit you. That's it. They can't throw you. They can't do nothing. They have to either block this move or just not be in the way of it. However, you got to think, well, then what's the downside, right? Well, hey, you're in a fixed position getting up, right? So uh, Scarlet could just as easily take a step back, make you whiff it, and then come back and smack you in the face, right? You are very much stuck in place while doing this move. So there's kind of the play counterplay aspect of that, right? So it's not always the smartest thing. Now... Uh, one of the most common ways to get around it is just, you know, oh, you're going to do it. I'm just going to jump and then kick you in the head on the way down. And that's all there is to it. But we also have wake up up two. now wake up up two is very much designed to kind of stop the whole jumping thing. Wake up up two is actually immune to jumps. And on top of that, hey, it launches and you get combos from it. So it has a lot more damage potential than wake up up three. Although if you're doing it to an enemy level on the ground, keep in mind it has no invulnerability at all against a grounded foe, meaning if they just you know, kind of hit buttons while you're waking up, the up two is 100% going to lose. And your final wake up option on the ground? Well, that is the delayed wake up. So just hold your stance switch button while you're knocked down on the ground, and you will wake up later than you normally do. So here is regular timing, and here is delay timing. Now, it's not a world of difference to be sure, but it can definitely throw off the enemy's game plan. There's a lot of setups they can do on your wake up that are basically like mathematically perfect, right? Uh, it takes your wake up timing into account. And with that said, the delay wake up here, it throws off all that timing, right? So they're hitting buttons or whatever. You can delay your wake up and just like they'll be whiffing over your head and you just go whatever you want to from there. Now, also, Flawless Blocking has two of these options. So if you were to Flawless Block any given move, you can do an up three, and you can also do an up two as well. So you have these options not just from being waking up from the ground, but also if you specifically block a move you've read very well, you can turn the tables in a heartbeat. Once again, could go a lot further into a lot more details. There's a lot of depth on the defensive end in Mortal Kombat 11, but that should get you started. An important thing to know is there's a lot of things going on besides just, you know, punching and kicking each other, right? There's a lot of different kinds of effects in this game. So, for example, as Collector here, I can make the ground burn. 
And you best get out of dodge, right? Because as long as this ground is burning, you're taking damage. And that is obviously not in your interest. Another example here, she have a new character. Her EX hit throw here. Seems fine after I take the hit, right? That's fine. But as soon as I start moving, oh my god, look how much damage I'm taking, right? Uh, so this creates an effect on me where the more I move around, the more I'm going to take damage. So it behooves me after taking this hit to kind of stay still because the more I jump around, the more I do stuff. Like this move starts doing exponentially more damage than the initial move itself. So status effects are a big deal in Mortal Kombat 11. Some characters can create shields where they take less damage. Some characters can create shields where you take damage for hitting them. There's a lot of different effects in this game besides just the base punch and kick of it all. So I highly suggest you go into training mode and the tutorials to learn exactly what these characters can do. Now, one of the big things I see a lot of people struggle with in this game is, hey, dealing with people who just jump all the time, right? And for someone who's had any history of Mortal Kombat, you might think, well, the obvious answer to deal with any jump is uppercut, right? And for some characters, hey, yes, some characters definitely have that uppercut privilege, right? Like Jade, Collector, their uppercuts are just a lot better at dealing with jumps than a lot of other characters, right? But not everyone kind of works that way. Uh, it turns out for a lot of characters, the best answer isn't to do the uppercut, but to do something else. So we'll stick with Jade for this example because she's really privileged with dealing with jumps, but she has something like down three. So down three is actually a very good anti-air. Now you might think, what? You know, this move that hits at the shins, this is an anti-air? Well, yeah. So hey, Terminator, how's your luck uh, kicking me going here? Not very well, eh? Uh, because one of the things here is this move lowers her hitbox. So she's actually much lower to the ground when she's doing this move making any typical jump in much harder to connect with. Now, certain jump ins hit at certain angles, right? And it's easier with uh, certain characters to hit a move like this, but all things considered, this is a fantastic anti-air and she's not the only character with something like this. Like Cabal is a great example, in my opinion here. So you got Sindel set the jump here and try as I might, Cabal's uppercut's kind of jank. Honestly, it's not a good uppercut. Like, I'm just getting crushed no matter, like, what I'm doing. Unless I'm, like, super out of it ahead of time super early. But if I try to be, like, more reactive to it, I'm getting crushed every freaking single time. Not working, but... Hey, what was that? What's this about? What's going on here? So it turns out his down three is an amazing anti-air. So same deal here. It moves his hitbox both down and away. So the jump now is much more hard to hit. Uh, against Cabal versus the uppercut, which just is not cutting the butter unless you just get so early ahead of it. Like you become predictive rather than reactive, right? And of course, from here, you can cancel into like no bad spin, just get whatever combo stuff you want. So that's another example. A lot of characters want to use very specific normals instead of their uppercuts as anti air options. Like on the flip side here, Sindel as well, since we have the character here. Her uppercut has a lot of range, but if you're too slow, man, like. It can be really iffy. Like, if you're far out, sure, whatever. The range of it's great, but the startup and the fact she kind of jumps up while doing it kind of sticks her head out really bad. But all of a sudden, you do something like down one. And down one, can it can work. You know, sometimes you're rolling the dice just a little bit, and sometimes it can be a little wonky. But as you can see here, it totally works as an anti-air. And, of course, you can go in, like, you know, special cancels or whatever from there. But, yeah, play around with your moves here. Moves that move your hitbox down to the ground and or away are a lot better than a, the traditional uppercut for a lot of people. The answer lies in just learning what you have and learning your tool set and all of a sudden something as dinky as uh, Cabal's down three, as jank as it looks, becomes a very fierce anti-air move. Now one of the most important things about Mortal Kombat 11 and other NetherRealm games is stages truly and honestly really matter because we have stage interactables. So we have the new Soul Chamber stage, and I think this is a really good example of it. So we have this interactable here, right? So if I choose to use it... Hey, that's a true grab, by the way. And the enemy gets bonked up. So why is this one important here? Why do I want to showcase this one? Because it's really strong! So once, once again, this is a true grab. So no blocking it. Get bopped. And that bop is a juggle. So all of a sudden, instead of like, you know, a base grab or whatever, we can now get this grab instead of from this interactable and get a whole combo from it. So that's almost 40% right there, right? 
dang sight bigger than the normal 14% of throw gives. And of course, I can do a lot more than just that. I could also combo into it if I so choose, you know, and just go from there. Of course, drop the combo because I'm recording, but you get the idea, right? And that's just one interactable of so many. Let's uh, go to the other side of the stage. Over here on this side of the stage, we got a defensive interactable where I can just, you know, hey, switch sides with my enemy. And that repositioning with my back literally against the wall could be the difference between you know, winning or losing the game. And that's just one stage of, I don't even know how many stages there are now in Mortal Kombat 11 because we just added a bunch of new ones. But yeah, your stage choice is a big deal. There are certainly stages that benefit certain characters and certain strategies more than other stages. It could just be as simple as like, hey, I'm going to whip this thing at your head, right? But it could be, hey, I got interactable specific combos that only work thanks to this specific interactable. And I'm going to extra mess you up even more than usual thanks to it. Now, I do want to mention the last breath mechanic. This is a chip damage game, and you get chipped off everything, even normals. And yes, chip can kill. However, there's a way around it just for a little bit, and that is the last breath. So you might see here on the side, these little status effects popping up. One says chip avoid it, and the other one says last breath. So these guys are your only ways out of taking a chip damage kill. So you need a full defensive bar to do this. And once you do it, that defensive bar goes away for the rest of the round. So you can see here, there's no more defensive bars for Robocop. And now that he's on chip, the next hit does kill. But as long as you have full defensive bars, you can rest assured that you can survive at least one or two hits of chip damage before you go down for the count. So now let's talk armor in Mortal Kombat 11. Armor in previous Mortal Kombat games is all over the place. However, in Mortal Kombat 11, well, not so much. Armor is only on a few specific sources. One of the chief ones being, hey, your Fatal Blow, right? And Fatal Blow armor is not what it used to be if you played the game at launch. It actually happens a lot later in the move. It used to start on frame 5, now it starts on frame 8. So if your timing's a little suspect, you're still gonna get blown up here. I can hit him all I want, he armors through it, he kills me, but now it's a little bit easier to stop it before it even gets off the ground, right? But yeah, Fatal Blow's still armored, but not as strong as they used to be. Other sources of armor? Well, interactables. So if we take our handy dandy cactus here, if we do our interactable button and hit block at the same time, we will armor ourselves while doing it. So it takes a lot of resources here. Like normally we do it here, just the interactable. It just takes a defensive bar and that's it. Nothing else, right? However, well, if we want to armor it, now you're going to see it's going to take that defensive bar and both offensive bars. So it does make certain wake-ups like kind of guaranteed for the most part. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but it does take a heck of a lot of resource on your part. Now that said, it's also the most truly valuable with like the grab ones because ones with like a strike attached to it or get out of dodge, well then you don't fully turn the tables on your enemy, right? But yeah, this is one of the ways you can armor yourself on wake up and the armor is frame one as far as I can tell, as far as I remember, and then just really flip the tables however you have to commit a lot of resource towards doing it. In very rare exceptions, some moves are armored themselves. So Nightwolf here, he has the wolf buff, and if you enhance the wolf buff, the part where he does the enhancement, that is armor. As you can see there, you can go through that laser clear as day. Now we still take damage, it doesn't negate the damage or anything, right? And if you're a bit slow, you're gonna get crushing blow, as you can see there. Uh, but it is a source of armor outside of the usual thing just incredibly rare once again here most sources of armor in this game come from your fatal blows or using interactables now probably the most famous source of armor in this game is the breakaway so when you are getting comboed and you are airborne specifically because you can't do all your feet are on the ground you can burn both your defensive bars and land on the ground so if you don't have both defensive bars you can't do it all you have to do is hit down and block while you are airborne and with that in mind, it keeps you safe from some fairly nasty combos. Now, all that said, hey, so we went over armor a bit here. There's a new mechanic in Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath to help deal with things like breakaways and armor. New to Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath Edition are armor breaking moves. And it breaks all forms of armor. It doesn't just have to be breakaway. It can be a fatal blow. It could be interactable armor. It doesn't really matter. If it's armor, it's gonna get broken. 
So now the armor breaking moves are different character to character, unfortunately. There's no universal stuff to this, right? I'm picking Scorpion because I think it's a pretty pronounced example here. He has his back three, which is also a safe on block overhead, so hey, it's pretty good. Uh, this is his armor breaking move, so let's show an example here. So for Scorpion, a lot of combos happen off the back of the EX teleport, right? I do this and go forward and try to combo out, but in this case, hey, he's going to break away. No combo for me, or is there? So if I know he's going to break away, it literally becomes as simple as doing a back three and then stopping it dead in his tracks. And all of a sudden, hey, look at that. So that back three, now that it breaks armor, it causes a bounce if it breaks the armor. And from there, hey, now we can easily recombo. And we can do whatever Scorpion stuff. I don't know Scorpion combos very well. Uh, just to let you know. But yeah, so they burned both their defensive bars. Uh, they're up a certain creek to put it a certain way. And you still get your full combo potential. Now, of course, here comes the catch, right? So say, hey, we're doing that breakaway. Well, say, I think you're going to go for your armor breaking move, right? So I do this and then... That's the end of it, right? So it becomes a bit of a two-player guessing game. Am I going to break? Am I not going to break? If I don't break and you go for your armor-breaking move, well, then your combo didn't do too much damage in the end. Of course, if you catch me, then I lose all my resources and I'm taking damage anyways and that kind of stuff, right? So it's a two-player guessing game, but yeah. So before Aftermath, only Spawn had this ability. Now, every single character in the game can do this. Unfortunately, some characters only have it on certain variations or not universal, like Scorpions is universal. You can do it no matter what variation is in. Some people aren't that lucky. You gotta play with it character to character. But yeah, armor breaks are a big deal and are probably gonna shift the meta a little bit for Mortal Kombat 11. Now to quickly go over a very important concept in this game, jailing. So what is jailing and why is it useful? Well, first up here, the usefulness is some characters, they don't have awesome combo starters outside of high attacks, right? Try as they might, like, uh, you got Noob Cybot here. This is an excellent combo starter move, right? This works for a lot of things for a lot of combos. However, if it gets blocked, a lot of characters can blow it up for free. Uh, it's kind of very bad on block here. As you can see, it is negative 17. That's not very good. But, hey, something like this. Why? That's negative 4. That's, like, safe on block. That's not negative at all. But the problem lies here in that it is duckable because it's a high, right? So how do we get someone to stand up already not just like mash down one forever and just annoy me, right? How do we get them to stand up for this high? Well, that's what jailing is. So as you can see here, the enemy is ducking pretty as you please, right? But say we hit him with something like down three, my little toe tap here. So it only does 1%, so obviously not a lot of damage there, but, 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 it forces him to stand up. That's the most important part here. So you can see here, after this move hits, I have 12 frames of advantage. And my stand two, that takes eight frames to pull off. And well, eight, well, not to insult you here or nothing, in case you don't know, eight's not as big of a number as 12, right? So it takes him 12 frames before he's allowed to return to that duck. And before that 12 frames is up, we can clonk him with the stand two, which is eight frames, leading to a situation like this. Where try as he might, he cannot duck fast enough to stop getting hit. Now he is allowed to block. That is the only thing the character is allowed to do. They are allowed to block. They can't do any movement options, be it jumping, ducking, backdashing, like whatever movement, can't do it. Uh, they are in hit stun, so they can't hit buttons. All they are allowed to do is block. So in this scenario here, uh, since my combo starter that I want to do is a high, uh, I can now force them to finally stand up and take my combo. So when you are fighting that opponent that just won't stop crouching, won't stop mashing down one, all that kind of stuff, and you want to get a high starter in, this is what you need. Now, the jailing button is different for everyone, you know? Some people, they like down one. Some people like down three. Some people like down four. Some people, they have like a weird, you know, character-specific thing for them, but that is the essence. You look at the button here, you look at the frame data, and by the way, if you want to turn on frame data, just go here, practice options, frame data, and you can turn on player one, player two, or both. So you want to know that frame data. Uh, but yeah, look at the frame data here. And it's basically just simple math. Take the move you want. In this case, 8 frames. Take the hit advantage you see. So in this case, 11. And if the move you want is smaller than the hit advantage, then it will force a jail and hit from there. So sometimes you got to be a little quick, right? Because, you know, a couple frames is not a lot of time to work with. But that is the concept in a nutshell. Force the enemy to stand up so they have to take the move you want to give them. 
Now, once again, they get the block, yes, but if they try to do anything but block, move is then guaranteed, and hey, Bob's your uncle, combo out and have fun. Now, I want to tell you about a basic but important option select, and what is the term option select? Well, it's a whole thing, but long story short, you generally get the best option for you every single time. Multiple things can happen despite the same amount of inputs. And what is this option select? Well, we call this the Jump OS. I got Shao Kahn here because I think he's one of the best examples of it. So all you have to do is input your special move after a jump kick. So all you have to do is jump and input your special move. In this case, for Shao Kahn, it's the shoulder charge. The shoulder charge off a jump kick for Shao Kahn can lead to a lot of easy damage. You don't got to work too, too hard. You don't got to stress a pretty little head about it, right? You can get some decent damage off it. But here's the thing. So this is what makes it an option select. If the enemy blocks, and this was a change that happened some months ago, and you input your special move, your jump kick gets blocked, hey, that's all there is to it. Now, jump kicks on block, they're not as plus as they used to be in older revisions of the game. So roughly around here, you're you know zero to negative one, right? Although if you do it really deep, then you can be still plus. But regardless of how deep you do it, as long as you input your special move, hey, if it gets blocked, it's not coming out. It will only ever come out if the move connects. Meaning, for the most part, it's always safe to input this move. So you can always just go jump kick and put whatever special, whatever character you want to be, and it comes out, and if it gets blocked, well then, hey, you get blocked, and then you can worry about doing ground normals, all that kind of fun stuff. Now, one thing to note is very important. This is for grounded special moves. If you jump and input an aerial special move, you're still gonna get it. So if we input it now after a jump kick, we're still gonna get it, and Shao Kahn blocks all of it, and... He's going to rip us apart as soon as we land. It's not going to work out in our favor, right? So it has to be a grounded move. So conversely, say we do jump kick in the hair whip, which is back forward one, right? So on block, hey, we're inputting it. It's not coming out. Second we turn off that block, well then, hey, now it's going to come out. As you can see there, right? So this works with grounded special moves. It's not going to be as applicable for every single character, but it is an important thing to know. And if your character can take use of it, then hey, you should. Next thing I want you to learn is a very, very important concept, not just for Mortal Kombat, but for fighting games as a whole. And that is hit confirming and hit confirming your combos. So it's all in the name, really. Hit confirming is you visually confirming your hit and then going into your special move and you know whatever extends your combo. So, same scenario, but the enemy is blocking. Well, this might not work out so well for us, right? Because we already now have inputted our special move. There's so many situations where the enemy is now allowed to punish us because we went for the special move. But if we just let it rock, hey, maybe we're not ideal situation, but we're not punishable. So, how do we practice hit confirming, right? Well, go into your AI options. When it comes to block mode, I want to set this here. Set it to random combo. So now the enemy is just going to randomly block or randomly not block. You don't know. You can't tell. So now it's up to you to confirm and practice. Okay, if he takes the hit, then I go into my special move. And if he blocks the hit, don't go into my special move. So here's just a couple reps of example. Got the hit. Cool. Went into it. Got the hit. Go into it. Got the hit. Go into it. Got the hit. Go into it. Okay, hopefully you get a block here in a second. Okay, got the block. Don't do it. Now, if you look at my inputs, I pre-buffered the motion for the special move, but I didn't hit the button, right? So now, every time you get this here, that's the general idea, is when they block, don't do the special move. And if they get hit, then hey, do do the special move and combo out. Because so many specials in this game are not safe on block, so it's up to you to make sure, for your own interest and to save your own hide, that you only do the special moves when you know you got the hit. Now, for some characters, Shang Tsung being one of them, uh, you do want to double layer hit confirm, meaning you want to do something if it hits and you want to do something if it blocks. So this string right here, and we'll just set it off. We'll set it all block here for a second here. This string right here that we've been using has a plus on block ender, meaning all things being equal, it is Shang Tsung's turn after this because he recovers quicker than the enemy does. Now, yeah, there's a gap and there's some other stuff, but... That's more advanced stuff. We'll deal with that later, right? But so now, generally speaking, we want to make this double layer hit confirm work like this. So on block, we end with our plus on block ender. And on hit, well, then we'll go right into our special move. Here, AI options. Set, set it to random combo. And here's a couple reps of that idea. All right. So now, hey, let's look at this here. Block. All right. Let's go into the plus on block. Hit. 
Go into our special. Hit. Go into our special. Block. Go into our plus on block. Block. Go into our plus on block. Hit. Go into our special. So on and so forth, right? Uh, depending on your character, depending on what you're doing, some things are harder on timing than others. To be sure, that's just the nature of fighting games, right? Uh, some people have strings that are kind of tight to hit confirm, some people don't. And dual layering hit confirm is a harder thing, to be sure. Uh, not all characters, well, most characters don't need the dual layers. Either it's pretty binary. Either do the move or don't. Uh, for dual layering, it's a lot harder. That, once again, yo, AI options, random combo, practice, practice, practice. That's the best way to do it. Uh, but yeah, it's a very key thing for any fighting game. This skill set you learn in Mortal Kombat 11 will carry over to future fighting games. I guarantee it. Now, I want to tell you about a very specific number that matters a lot in this game. And that is negative five on block. Now, why is this number important of all things, right? So negative five on block, for the most part, is the most negative you can be and still flawless block an upcoming move coming your way. Negative six, negative seven, negative eight, whatever, no dice. Has to be negative five or less, you know, less negative, whatever, that's fine too, right? But negative five is the most negative you can be and still flawless block. So in this scenario here, I'm just gonna do four, four, one here with Cassie, negative five on block. Brack is gonna counter with his down one. And hey, well, wouldn't you know it, I still get the flawless block. However, if I did something that was negative six, no dice. So that's kind of a long and short of it. And this is specifically to uh, deal with like stuff like, you know, getting down one back and all that kind of stuff. So negative five, especially against down ones and stuff is just as about negative as you can be and still have the opportunity to flawless block after the fact. If you're too much negative after that, while you still might be safe on block, then your flawless block opportunity is not going to happen because you need at least that much of a window of a gap to do it in. So just keep it in mind. And our final tip, and it's the hardest tip to convey in words, because it's something that you learn over time, really. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11, specifically Mortal Kombat 11, especially compared to the previous game Mortal Kombat X, is a very neutral slash footsies heavy game, right? Just a simple act of like, I'm just going to walk backwards, let you whiff your move, and then I'm just going to punish you on whiff, right? That's such a key component of this game. This game, more than any other modern fighter on the market, is like a classic Street Fighter experience in that way. And yes, I do mean this over Street Fighter V as well. I think MK11 is a better Street Fighter game than Street Fighter V is, honestly. Uh, but yeah, spacing, knowing your, the length of your enemy's arms, knowing the length of their strings, knowing how they can work, right? Knowing what your enemy's proclivities are and what kind of strings do they like. All these things will save your bacon. If you know, say the enemy is Robocop, and they love advancing forward with four, two, one when they're in range, right? Roughly around here. Oh, they're always going to go for it. Hey, just walk back and let them whiff. And then you can conk them yourself, right? That's such an important deal to this game. Uh, a lot of people, especially newer players, when they start this game, they just freak out and, ah, that one, that one, that one, that one uppercut. And like, that's all they can do, right? And if you're in that mindset, you're always going to sell yourself short. And you're never going to improve that much. Now, I know it's hard to get out of. I know it's stressful to get out of because um, a lot of this is just you not being comfortable with the situation, especially when you're beside the enemy. But there's so many things that work in your favor, like as we went over here, understanding how flawless blocks work, understanding your defensive options, the simple act of jailing, like, hey, I'm plus 14 here, right? Which means my stand one is guaranteed, and then I can always go into the string. So if you're always mashing, that means when I down one you, I can just go into this, and you're mashing buttons, I get a guaranteed combo from that, right? Understanding the game systems is such an important core of the game and what it is. And understanding just when it's time to cool off for a second, maybe don't mash a button, maybe walk back for a second, just take it all in. These are the important skill sets to learn. The fundamentals of this game and the fundamentals of fighting games in general will greatly reward you in Mortal Kombat 11. So yeah, that's 15 essential tips to get you started, and that's just scraping the tip of the iceberg. There's so much to understand in Mortal Kombat 11. There's so much to know about all these wonderful characters. There's so much tech to be known, all that kind of stuff out there. Uh, the only thing I can say, if I'm going to chill for a second, is, hey, on the channel, I got a lot of videos over the span of Mortal Kombat's life, be it tech, be it guides, be it combos, all that kind of stuff. So maybe check out the channel further to learn more. And other than that, my friends, I guess we've reached the end of this video. So, hey, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Mortal Kombat.